Last week, I had the opportunity to go to the new exhibit at the Maritime Museum of British Columbia called Queer at Sea, Tales from the Two-Spirit LGBTQ plus community. This exhibit shares the stories of some members of this community in their own words, and their personal reflections show a glimpse of the many ways that orientation and identity have played into their life at sea. I really enjoyed Queer at Sea and how it was put together. It is text-based with more stories and oral histories than physical objects, but the level of community involvement that bonded this into a fully-fledged museum exhibit is very compelling. Not only did I have an opportunity to check out the artifacts on display and read the stories of sailors and other sea folk, but I also got the chance to chat with Heather Feeney, the collections and exhibit manager. I'm Heather Feeney and I'm the Collections and Exhibits Manager at the uh, Maritime Museum of BC. And right now we are in the museum space um, in the um, Queer at Sea exhibit. Would you mind telling us about this new exhibit, Queer at Sea? So this exhibit really came about as a community collaboration. Um, about a year ago, we started soliciting um, stories from, from the queer and trans community. Because this is a topic that's not been talked about really um, in museums all that much, and maritime museums especially, um, we wanted people to be able to tell their stories in their own words. That was really important for us. And we just got an amazing response from people. The submissions started flooding in, and I think we ended up with about 15 stories. So oh, wow. we have um, kind of contributions uh, across all sorts of maritime industries, um, maritime recreation, um, stories from all sorts of different people, and it, and across generations too. And I think it gives a really good um, feeling of what it was like in in the really bad old days and and now in a time when there's more acceptance and more hope um i think it has a good bridging of that gap mm -hmm. i think that was one thing that struck me through this exhibit was just the wealth of stories which was really great to see and like you said just like how many different types of stories there were to be told which was really really fantastic there is obviously a lot of stories here. There is a couple of objects. Do you have a favorite story or object that you want to tell us a little bit more about? There's one story from um, a gentleman that we actually went out and talked to and did an oral history with and then, and then wrote up the story. Um, and he faced some pretty horrible discrimination um, earlier on in his career and then by the end of his career, he actually had the job of the man who discriminated against him. Fantastic. And he just felt incredibly vindicated by that. And that story is just, it's exactly what I wanted to see from this exhibit. These, these moments of triumph through the, the adversity that, that people have had to face through no fault of their own. So, in a much broader sense, what do museums mean to you and why are they important? So for me, um, museums are a way of connecting people with the past, of connecting people through stories. Um, I think that humans generally, since we have been able to talk, we've been telling each other stories mm -hmm. and that's a really core fundamental part of who we are as a species. Um, and so museums for me are that way of bridging the gap between the past and the present and seeing where we were and learning more about ourselves through what other people have gone through, um, through the objects they've created and what they've deemed to be important enough to save. Um, yeah, it's museums. <laughs> Museums are great. Museums are, are the place where our collective history lives. I often hear from museum people that it's the stories that really draw them to either volunteer or work in these types of institutions. So it's really interesting that you say that. Yeah, I think like every, each individual part of the museum is there to support that aspect of it. We have a collection to draw on. Like, there are, the objects can be beautiful, they can be interesting, but 
at the end of the day, it's just an object if there's not a story behind it. Um, the programming is there to support that. Everything is there to support that human connection. Mm -hmm. It's it's the the combination of stories and being able to almost have a tangible history, although you can't always touch the things that are in the case. <laughs> yeah. But being able to see something and realize, like, wow, a person a decade ago or a hundred or a thousand years ago used this object is there's something that just can't beat that, you know? There's there's something really special and I think a very specific type of learning can come from that. Yeah. So that's my my favorite types of objects are the ones where you can see how people have used them, the wear on a pair of shoes, a yeah. button that's fallen off, fingerprints on something. It gives it that really that tangible that that connection that you don't necessarily get when you just see like a perfect something in a case mm -hmm. to have that those signs that this was actually something this was part of somebody's life mm -hmm. that, and it's it's a it's a positive reminder to me it's like people have always been the same they have always <laughs> lost the buttons on their shirts yeah. they have they have always loved as we have seen through this exhibit yeah. they have always overcome and it's just, history is just so fun and it's so wonderful to be able to see it in an exhibit like this. If you are interested, I highly recommend checking out this exhibit in person. It is going to be running until November 5th, 2022. But if you are unable to get to this exhibit and still want to support this museum and the staff who work here, I'm going to be leaving a link to their donation page in the description down below. Until next time, friends.